Check, 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 check. Okay. My levels look good in OBS, so we should be good there. <laughs> Gotta plug my light in. Hold on. And uh, there we go. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good and blinding. You guys can see me, though, so that's what's important, I guess. Uh, okay, let me turn up my headphones so I can actually monitor myself. Hello? Hello? Oh, that's right. I gotta actually go into my mixer and unmute myself to be able to hear myself. Yes, 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 yes. I've had this thing for months and I'm still only just barely getting used to it. Okay, let's see. Okay, five viewers, 21 views. Okay, uh, how do I sound? Anybody wanna put in chat something on that? Should be able to start pretty much right away. Just want to double check that I sound good to you guys because it looks good from my end. <laughs> okay. I guess nobody wants to talk. That's fine. I can understand being uh, standoffish when it comes to interacting. I definitely was when I first started voice acting and stuff. So let's just get into this. So the topic today is demos, and we're going to kind of talk about um, what is a demo and what is the requirements for a demo and when you should really get a demo and many, many other things. If you have any specific questions, drop them in the chat and I will answer them um, anytime I have a break between things, but for the time being, I am going to just start from my notes that I have here. So, I have a title overlay. Part one, do you need a demo? Or more importantly, do you need a demo? Because a lot of people aren't really sure. They get into voice acting, they hear about demos, they see that people who are doing it seriously have demos, so they're like, what? do I do? Do I make one myself? Does somebody make it for me? What does it cost? Like all of this stuff. These are all the questions you should be asking, but to start, the question is, do you need a demo? And it depends on how serious you are about it. Do you want to do this as a job? Do you want to make money at it? Do you want to do it as a hobby? Do you want to actually make this into a career and a business for yourself because if you go into voiceover you are a freelancer and you are working for yourself in a business so once you have decided how serious you are about it the question is how long have you been doing it have you taken classes acting classes improv classes any kind of performance classes have you done the live performance which is by and far going to be the thing that gives you the most experience when it comes to acting and voice acting particularly. All of the best voice actors, if you look at their backgrounds, they were stand-ups, they were improv actors, they were theater actors, they were on-camera actors. So it's important to actually do live performance, get that live feedback, so that when you are on the mic, you already kind of have an idea of what's good and what's not so good. Um, have you gone coaching? Coaching can be pricey, but being able to actually have someone directly work with you one-on-one -on -one to let you know that was good, that wasn't good, this is what you should be doing, and teach you not only the acting, but also the business, and probably get a demo for you at the end. A lot of coaching programs end with getting you a demo, so it is good to get a coach if you can and if you can afford it. But I can understand you don't want to drop over $1,000, sometimes into the two, $3,000 range, or more if you're getting from somebody in the industry in L.A. So you just want to see if it's something you want to do. So the next question is really, how often do you practice? 
if you want to voice act, you have to actually do it. You have to practice. You have to learn how to do it. So the easiest way to do that is just to practice. And the easiest... Excuse me. One moment. <clears throat> Sorry. It's, uh, did not get a lot of sleep last night, so I'm a little froggy. But um, <clears throat> how often do you practice? And you can practice without a microphone, without any equipment. Just grab a script, grab a book, grab a magazine, get a video game that doesn't have voice acting, like a turn-based RPG or Animal Crossing technically has voice acting, but if you like that, just read it out loud. Give each of the villagers a voice, a unique voice that you think that they would have and a personality that you like for them. Um, so once you've been practicing a while, you know, you should be paying attention and you should be understanding where your strengths are and where your strengths aren't because you're not going to be able to do literally everything the amount of people who have been able to do pretty much everything in voiceover is pretty low mel blank maybe the guy who voiced pretty much all of the looney tunes he had like an eight octave range he he could do pretty much everything from tweety to yosemite sam and foghorn leghorn but there was one mel blank and there was a june foray which one was better? That's up to you to decide. Some people say June Foray was the female Mel Blanc, and some people say he was the male her. So that's your decision. But the important thing is you shouldn't hold yourself to that standard, especially not when starting out. What's important is that you are aware of what your actual strengths are so that you know when you're actually ready. So once you've been practicing a while, and you're starting to feel confident, you feel like you have a handle on how to do this, it doesn't sound totally amateur, you can learn to record. Now, when you first start recording, don't put it out right away. What's important is that you get your sound good first, and you practice while recording so that you can listen back and hear what you did on the tape, because it'll sound a lot different when it's not in your own head and not in the moment. When you listen back, there's so many things that become apparent that are very important to notice. So, here is the most basic recording setup. It is not perfect. This is not a perfect setup. This is not even necessarily a professional setup, but it will get you by for a while for amateur work and maybe some professional work. Don't Make sure that you have somebody who actually knows good audio listens first and tells you whether or not it's good enough for pro work. Because if you are not 100% certain, you don't want to get the reputation as the person who sounds amateur. Okay? That's the simplest thing you can do, is make sure you don't sound amateur. Alright? As long as you have good audio, that's the first step. That's the baseline. If you don't have good audio, you're already not good getting in the door. So, good audio first. Here's the easiest way to get at least decent audio. First things first, find a quiet place in your house. As close to the center of the house as possible. If it has multiple floors, middle floor, m center of that floor. Away from doors, away from windows. If you have like a closet, especially a walk-in closet. Walk-in closet would be the best because there's the most room to actually move around. Smaller closet can work as long as you can sit or stand in there comfortably you can use it, but just keep in mind, you want something that has a lot of material around it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, plenty of dense material, walls, everything around the area, as far away from any large appliances as possible, furnaces, fridge, AC, anything like that. This right here is not my voiceover setup. This is my streaming and YouTube setup, so... I've got an AC vent right up there that I always turn off when I'm recording actual voiceover in my actual booth back here. But when I'm just doing more amateur stuff like on YouTube and Twitch, which have lower standards, I'll use this mic, which is out in a partially treated room. You can see behind me, there's a sheet there, and there's a mattress topper over there. The mattress topper is doing a little bit more. Sheet is doing nothing. Way too thin. That's a backdrop. I use it for movie reviews. There's more stuff around here. Moving blanket. It's only doing a tiny bit. It's not sounding very good, and I'll explain why in just a minute. 
but for the most part, you're going to need something a lot thicker than that. Um, lost my train of thought, sorry. So, away from large appliances, quietest place. Make sure you can at least sit in there or stand in there if you think that you can manage standing for the entire time you're recording. Pack it full of soft stuff. Stand in there so that you're sure that you're not blocking yourself out. There needs to be room for you still. But just jam any kind of soft, textured, thick, dense materials. The thickest, the densest, the texturist, and the uh, softer, the better. So you just push backpacks, luggage, stuffed toys, pillows, couch cushions, bags full of just like cotton stuffing. Like just stuff that all up in there. And just make sure you cover as much area as you can. Because the unfortunate thing is that we live in houses. Houses are not designed for audio. They're designed to be cheap to make. Or rather not cheap, but affordable to make. So everything's going to be a cuboid. Which means that there's sound bouncing back and forth from this wall, back and forth from that wall, up and down from ceiling to floor. So being able to stop that is difficult but not impossible, and not even necessarily expensive if you do it right. So, um, what you're trying to do is any parallel hard surfaces, you want to cover at least one side. So if there's two walls opposite each other, cover at least one with something soft and textured, as thick as possible, as dense as possible, so that when a sound wave bounces from the one side and goes to the other side, it just gets stopped, it gets diffused, so that it won't bounce back off the wall and get into the mic. Now, the next thing to keep in mind is try and kind of round out the corners, if you can. At the very least, if you get the soft materials, ceiling or floor, wall behind you, wall in front of you, wall to either side, as long as you get those soft materials, that's a start. Try and kind of, like, if you have softer, less firm materials, just kind of round out the corners a little bit so it's not as square. That will help a good deal, too. Probably the one of the better materials you'll have at home is couch cushions. I've been able to do professional work with couch cushion forts in closets. That works a decent amount. It's not going to be super comfortable, and... You're playing with fire because it's not solid and it can be kind of difficult, but it can work. Now, once you have everything set up, all of the stuff in there, and the easiest way to tell is to just clap your hands and you can hear whether it's bouncing off of the walls. It's bouncing off some in here because this isn't fully treated. But in my booth, if I clap my hands, there would be the tiniest bit of bounce. There's just a little bit. It's not fully done. You still want a, a tiny, tiny bit, because if it's 100% no reverb, it's kind of off-putting. People don't like that. So, <coughs> ah, excuse me. So, once you have that set up, you need to get ready to record. So, there's two things that you can use to record when you're first starting out, not for professional work, not even to necessarily share with anyone. This is just so you can record yourself and listen back. So, what you can do is if you have a recent phone, last couple of years, especially an iPhone, they have very good microphones. For a phone, not overall, but for a phone, they have a very good microphone. Just get a selfie stick and just jam it into the soft stuff that you use to treat the space so that it won't move around. And point the microphone part towards you. Um, <clears throat> once you have it secured, do this. Make a hand like that. Put your pinky against the mic and your thumb on your lips. Like this. Straight forward. Then once you're at that distance, scoot it a couple inches to the side and turn it to point at your mouth. Don't point your mouth at it because then your breath is going to like that. What you want to do is this so the breath goes that way, but the voice is going in a full sphere out this way, full semi-sphere. So it's still going to hit here just fine, but the breath will go that way, which is way, way better. It's not going to sound great here. 
I have to kind of fist, because it's not super well treated, to make sure that if you are using a space that is not for professional work, but you still want to be heard well, simplest thing, at least light treatment, you know, some kind of blankets, thick material, and uh, a mic like this, which is a hypercardioid, so it has a very narrow field. So if I go off of it over here or over there, it's harder to hear me. <laughs> so that blocks out more room tone. And just get a little closer to it so your voice gets to it before the bouncings of your voice from all around, all of those reverberations, get back into it. They'll still get there. But if your voice is heard first, you'll at least be intelligible, which is what you need. So once you have it positioned correctly, once you have it secured... Try and face it into the space rather than towards the door, you know? So if there's, like, if you were sitting sideways in a closet, door's over there, try and point the mic that way towards the opposite corner from the door rather than that way. If you don't have a choice, it'll still work even if it's pointed a little towards the door, but it's just going to help if you actually have it set up like that. If there is no door, it's one of those ones that's just a doorway, hang a blanket across. Hang, like, a couple of blankets if you can. Just... Again, as thick as you can get. It'll really help in the long run, I swear. It Seriously, like, the audio is going to come down to the space itself, how well it's treated, and your microphone. Your microphone's less, though. If you have a cheap microphone in a well-treated space, it's going to sound passable. Maybe not professional, but usable. So... It's good enough for practice. You just want to be able to hear yourself. Uh, get a good voice recording app, one that actually lets you set the quality. Twisted Wave Recorder is good for iPhone. Smart Recorder, high quality voice recorder, whatever, on Android. I have an iPhone. I don't have an Android, so that's just the one that I've heard. Just make sure they're set to their highest quality. 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit, or higher. A higher number is always better, but that's like the lowest you should go. And WAVE or FLAC, if you can, so WAV or FLAC, and mono. Don't do stereo. Stereo just introduces more room noise, and it, it, you're only putting it into one single source. So stereo, they're just doubling this up. It's not doing anything. If you have a mic that can record stereo, it's not going to be great for voiceover because it's just introducing extra noise. You only need the one input, so... I don't know what that's supposed to be for. I guess if you're interviewing someone and you can only afford one mic. Now, if you have an older phone, you don't have to go out and get a new one. You can get... And this is, again, not for professional work. This is just so that you can record yourself and listen back. But you can get a Samsung Go mic. I just say this because it is very affordable it's like 30 to 40 bucks and it sounds at least as good as a blue snowball anybody who actually knows yes i know this one only goes down to 80 hertz and the blue snowball only goes to 40 but the 40 to 80 range is not going to matter for a brand new amateur they're not even going to be able to tell and like i said this isn't even for auditions this is just to listen back so it's a teleconferencing mic does not sound great but it's cheap and it sounds good enough to listen back to yourself. Make sure if you get that one, you can get a mic stand with a tripod adapter because they have a slightly smaller screw. That's going to be like 25 bucks. Does not matter the brand or anything, you know. Just pay attention to what's on the bottom to make sure that there's space in your booth to actually put it down and make sure that it's tall enough to be parallel to your head, whether you're standing or sitting because you're going to be talking into it. Also, Get a mini USB cable long enough that you can thread it out of your space to your computer. Do not have your computer in the space with you. I'm breaking that rule right now because, again, I am not recording voiceover. I'm recording this stream. So, the sound of my laptop is probably being heard right now. So is the AC, which has kicked on in the last couple minutes. Would not do that for voiceover because the second that background noise is in, it's not coming out. You can use all sorts of effects, but they just remove it. They either tear apart the EQ and make you sound tinny and robotic, or they only remove it between the lines. That noise is still there under your words. You can't get rid of it 
without incredibly expensive plugins like RX7, and I am not familiar enough with the plugin to actually know how effective it is at doing that non destructively. So just get it quiet. Computers out of the room. Do not put it in there with you. Mm, no. Um, same thing, hang loose hand, make sure, because this does have other settings, if you do get a Samsung Go mic, it's incredibly tiny, this is the whole thing, just like this, swings around, swivels, that's the part you talk into, this whole flat grill, and make sure that the switch is set to the top. The bottom one is just going to introduce more noise, because... Reasons will make more sense as you do more research. And the one between them is just 10 decibels quieter. So hit that. And should be fine for listening back to yourself. Now, when it comes to uh, all of this as well, when you're practicing, you should also be researching. Just read books. read, Watch YouTube videos. Do everything you can to absorb as much content as you can about voice acting and the actual craft of recording and business. Business comes a lot later, but just be absorbing everything you can and take it with a grain of salt. Like, even now, you guys should be double-checking that I'm actually legit and I know what I'm talking about if you want to trust me. Like, I will totally understand. I'm not going to be offended if you look into making sure that I'm actually legit about what I'm talking about. You should do that for everybody that you take advice from. So be sure to do that. Take all the advice you can. Some quick ones to check out. James Earl Taylor on YouTube. He's the voice of uh, Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars cartoon and a bunch of other guys. Um, Booth Junkie. He has some great stuff about you know mic reviews and stuff about acoustics so that you can treat your space appropriately. Um, Funny Guy Timmy's pretty good. He's more... On a lower level in terms of the business, he's not like a uh, a like like Hollywood actor necessarily, but he's honestly one of the best voice actors I've heard. That's just my opinion. I'm, I'm honestly really impressed with him. But definitely check out some of those. Check out Voice Over Voice Actor as the book, and just keep reading and watching whatever you can. So once you have your stuff set up. If you have the mic, you're going to need to get Audacity. You're going to need to get Audacity anyways for editing and stuff, but just get Audacity. It is free. Just Google Audacity. You will find it. Free program, super easy to use. I'm going to actually move now to showing you my desktop screen. If you'll give me a moment. Uh... Come on, shrink down, shrink down. It, whoop. Hmm, did that work? No, I think I clicked the wrong thing. Hold on. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still getting used to this. Um, desktop camera. There we go. There we go. I'm, I, I am small. All right. Here we go. Uh, crap. I never use it, so it's not usually my dock. Audacity. So you get this program for free. It's fine. There are some huge voice actors who still use this to th this day. Mainly because a lot of voice actors aren't necessarily that big on the whole thing. Reaper. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a question in the chat. Um, hmm. I guess I have the wrong stream chat for my thing here. Okay, I'm just going to... Nope. Never mind. There's just a delay. Okay. So there is a question in chat. I've heard that Reaper is much better. Any opinions? Reaper is good. Yeah, it's it definitely works. Um, the big thing is it just costs money. When you're first starting out, when you're just practicing, not even putting stuff up, just listening back to your stuff, Audacity works. It's free. It's pretty bare bones simple, but it works. Once you get into bigger stuff, once you do production, once you're doing stuff professionally, Reaper is a good option. It's $60 for a uh, license in per perpetuity, so it just keeps going. And their free trial lasts for a very long time as well, so you can just keep trying it for a long time. 
I personally use Adobe Audition just because I enjoy the effects rack preset, but all of these programs are pretty much the same thing on a bare level. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, they have different interfaces, and some of them are better at some things than other things, but they can all do the same stuff. So, as a basic thing here, let me move this. Whoop, no, not that. Come on now. Hold on, hold on. Uh, title overlay. Yes, let me move this down here because we need to see the top of Audacity. So, Audacity, very simple. Once you have your mic plugged in, you go to this drop down and you pick your mic out of the set. If you're using the Samsung Go mic, it'll say Samsung Go mic, and then you just click it and you go. In this case, I'm using an Audient ID14 interface. You can click that to show the various ones. Built-in microphone, that's just the laptop. This is the desktop audio capture using the Audient. Then over here, just set this to mono. Do not record voiceover ever in stereo. You can edit it into stereo later, but mono is what you want to record to. And then this is just whatever you want for your speakers, whether you want to use headphones, which I have mine plugged into the ID14, or you want to plug it into your computer, or just uh, let it play out of the speakers. It's, it's up to you on that one. Now, once you have your mic plugged in and you've picked the correct settings here, uh, you want to go up to preferences real quick. So that'd be Audacity, Preferences, and you want to go to Recording. Da, 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 not Recording. Um, quality, that's the one. Make sure this is set to 44100, so no lower than that. You could go up higher if you want to. A lot of interfaces don't go higher than 44.1, though, so keep that in mind. Um, and 16-bit, at the very least, which in this program is the lowest. Some of them go even lower, but uh, 16 at the very least. And we're gonna go, okay. So now, the th next thing you do is not hit record. You click this, this little microphone right here, and click start monitoring. So now you'll see that it is monitoring up here. And this little line that's popping up, that is your peak. That is how loud you're being. And that needs to be between negative 20 and negative 10. So right here, it's a little over negative 12. So that's just about perfect. You're going to normalize it later. So I know that sounds quiet. That sounds low. But that's just to give yourself extra room. And if you have it lower, you're less likely to pull in background noise. Because if it's too low to pick up the background noise, but it's high enough to pick up your voice, you can always bump your voice up, but it's harder to remove the background noise. So negative 20 to negative 10. So we can see that there. And we're going to stop monitoring. So then take whatever your material is. Um, I don't have any material. I have gum. Gum is going to be my material. So we hit record. And it starts recording. And you can see your waveform picking up. So I'm just going to read my material. Distributed by Mars Wrigley Confectionery U.S. Limited, Hackettstown, New Jersey, 07840-1503, USA. My cadence was all totally off with that because it was a cold read. Sorry. But that's the basic thing. You hit stop, and here it is. This is your audio. Now, to make it easier to hear, you can just double-click, or you can click the head here. And once you do that, you can go to Effect, Normalize, negative 3 decibel here. And that'll just bring it up so that the highest part is at negative 3, which is easier to hear. We'll go into that a little bit more in just a minute. So that is Audacity. Very simple. As long as your settings are right, it should be just plug and go. Um... Ah, my notes are on the stream. Hold on. Um, huh, why is it doing that? 
Okay, let me scoot those over then, I guess. Um, yeah, that works. Okay, so that'll be blocking me while I need it, but I don't actually need to see it. So, now you can record yourself and listen back. This is decent audio. This is usable audio. Not for professional work, but just for starting out, just for practicing. That'll get you started. Now, let's see. Da, 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 da. Then, um... Yeah, of course. I'm trying my best to uh, be informative here. I know it can be daunting and confusing with all the information that's out there, so I'm trying to just kind of distill it into one not really master class but a video that you can do and i'm gonna edit this down and put it on my youtube and it'll be on the video on demand if you missed any of it so let's see what is next da -da 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 -da. pick a unique passage hmm okay so once you've got that set up, you can practice. And once you've practiced a while, you get a little more confident. You can improve your space. Put a chair in there. Get proper acoustic treatment set up. And then you might want to start auditioning for roles. Now, do I necessarily recommend it with this setup? No. Not because it's not a good setup, but because it's incredibly annoying to have to set this all up and record in such a cramped sort of space. So get your space to sound good and be comfortable. And so once you are confident that your audio is good and you are comfortable just jumping into a space, recording, and getting it going, then you can record. And there's a lot of caveats here. Your... Whoa, I'm going to have to shrink this down because it's very long. Your slap together, amateur, unpaid only, not for pro work demo. So this is a demo in the most basic sense of the word that it is short for demonstration. Do not go for professional work with what I'm about to tell you. This is just so that you have something to send people who are like, hey, what do you sound like? Or if you want to send a message to someone who's like hey i'm doing a youtube series or something you can set you can link them to the demo that i'm about to say how to make and they can hear how you sound not for pro work period this i we're going to get into what's actually a usable pro demo in a bit but this is not going to be for pro work okay I'm leaving this up here so if anybody comes in later, they recognize that I'm not saying this is for pro work because I know I'll get a lot of crap for that <laughs> because even saying to do this is mm, iffy. Just don't use it for pro work. Use it only for amateur work or to show off to your friends, I guess. Just be clear that it's not a professional demo because it is not. So once you have your recording stuff set up, you're going to pick your material. You can pick just six things, six to eight works. Again, just pick books, magazines, comics, video game dialogue, whatever. Just dialogue, you know, stuff that you can use. Pick a unique passage from each. Try to make each show a different emotion, a different energy level, a different pitch, speed. Just make sure that none of them are the same. If any two are too similar, throw one out, replace it with something that's way different because you only get six to eight. And that can cover a lot, or it can cover nothing if you don't try. So, six to eight, pick them out. As, as this is for demonstration, it's technically free, fair use, but I am not a lawyer. Even my understanding of fair use is that it doesn't protect you from getting sued, it just gives you some kind of a defense if you are sued. So, keep that in mind. I am not a lawyer. If you're really nervous, write your own thing and just read a few passages to get an idea for the style of what you want. And then write your own thing 
in that style. Now, once you figure that out, write the passages into a script with writer duet. Or if you do have it, there is the more professional software of, uh, I'm not like, I'm not really a writer mainly. I just use writer duet, but it's basically a knockoff of another thing. It's just a script writing program. It's for formatting more than anything. It's free for up to three scripts. I'm not getting paid to use this. It's just the most convenient and it has a good free trial. So you don't even necessarily need to do this. Just put in a Word document or a text document. I just find it easier to read in an actual script format. So all you gotta do, it's taking it a minute because it has to sync to the cloud. So I'll give it just a minute. Ah, let me, if I do the, nope, nope, that's not working. Oh, it's hard to read these, I'm running out of space. Hold on, hold on, whoop. Ooh, big message here, hold on. Should you record separate, not for pro work demos, one for commercials, one, so different styles? Um, eh. That that's a lot of effort for something that's just amateur. I'd say if you get to that point, you should start looking at pro demos, which we'll look at in just a minute. So for this, just pick one thing and do that. In general, try and focus on one thing and then branch out. If you try and do everything all at once, you're just going to kind of get almost nothing in everything. So don't spread yourself too thin. Just try and pick one thing. If you want to be a narrator, do narration passages. If you want to be a character actor, do character pieces. But just pick one for this. And then when you start thinking, like, maybe I should have more, that's when you can start thinking about a pro demo. And, yeah, we'll get into that in just a moment. So, Ryder Duet, pretty simple. This is the desktop application. There's a browser version as well, which I'm pretty sure you only get the desktop app if you pay for it. It's only like something a month. It's just like this. So you start with the scene heading. So just hit tab one, two times, and then you have the character. Just write whatever it is. Spider-Man, I guess, if you're doing a Spider-Man comic. I like to, uh, you hit enter, and it takes you to dialogue. I like to hit tab to do a parenthetical and just kind of write heroic, grand, just general emotions. You don't necessarily need them if you actually analyze the passage correctly, but it's a good place to start. You hit enter and you have the dialogue and just type out what your passage is, which in this case, uh, I'll get you Doc Ock as long as my suit is red and blue there's some blue something about that length maybe a little longer three like medium-sized sentences usually but that should be long enough um and you can just do something like that like if you feel like you have a good idea of the style you can write your own like i said this isn't for pro work so it doesn't necessarily have to be that serious we're that good. It's just about showing what you sound like and the idea of what you can do. Now, once you have them written down, analyze them. You know, what... Um, oh, right. And once you have them written down, you uh, click that... Or click that? Yes, you click that icon to export it as a PDF. Put it onto your tablet or your phone so you don't have to have your computer in with you read it that way but uh once you have it before you record analyze what's the emotion you know what what emotion are they trying to convey are they trying to convey multiple emotions you want to make sure that you get all of the emotions correct or at least as correct as you can um what you know what words and sentences are most important like what should you emphasize if there's a name in there, probably a good idea to emphasize that. 
if there's like a specific action, it's probably a good idea to emphasize that. Just read it and try and understand what words are important here. And then how do you want to emphasize them? You can emphasize them by being loud or inflecting different, like I'll get you Doc Ock or I'll get you Doc Ock. You can go quieter or you can go, I'll get you space or I'll get you just these aren't great examples, but there's like a lot of different ways you can emphasize it. If you pay attention to how people speak, they emphasize in different ways. So just analyze, work out what words you need to emphasize, and decide how you want to emphasize them. Um, how realistic or stylized should it be? Should it be more cartoony and goofy? Or should it be like down-to-earth and conversational? Like, I'll get you, Doc Ock, as long as my suit is red! Or should it be, I'll get you, Doc Ock... As long as my suit is red. Probably more towards the other one. It can be a gradient, you know? It doesn't have to be all to one side. This would probably be pretty heavily to the cartoon side because I wrote something really silly, but you can go more towards the middle or, you know, sort of like three quarters, 25. It's it's a whole spectrum. And there's even more to it than that. It's it. There's a lot to be said. But just get an idea of what this should sound like. Have an idea in mind. Don't necessarily think of a voice to do. Think specifically about what they're saying first. You can add voice on top of it, but if you're too focused on the voice and not enough on the core of what the character is and what they're saying, it's not going to do so well for you. And even if it's a commercial piece or a narration piece, there's still a character there. There's still the character of the guy who's trying to sell you a car, but he's your neighbor. He wants to know that you're getting a good deal on the car. Or the guy who wants you to know... How good these penguins are living. Not very well, it's cold. They're still characters. More subtle characters, but it's still a character. It's still a personality. What kind of rhythm should it have? Like, you could go, I'll get you, Doc Ock. Very staccato. Very just even, like that. Or, I'll get you, Doc Ock. Kind of drawn out. Or, I'll get you, Doc Ock. You can do weird stuff. Try not to go too weird. Still try and make it sound like actual human speech. But think about the rhythm. It's kind of musical language, so it can have a different rhythm. Uh, and then read the passage out loud. Do Apply everything you've thought. If you're reading out loud and trying this as you're doing it, awesome. You should be experimenting. Don't just think it in your head. Like, actually say it out loud. Like, work out. Like, does that sound right? Sounds okay. Yeah, and at this point, you should have some practice, so you should have some kind of idea about how it works. Now, also pay attention to, are you stumbling on words? If there's specific words or phrases that you're stumbling on, rewrite them. Even if you took it from, like, a book or something, like, nobody cares. And in fact, some people would prefer that you do something original. Just write it to something that you can say without having to stumble. If you're having trouble, this is your writing, so you can change it. If it's from a client... You can't, so you kind of have to figure these out, but at least for this, because this is not for pro work, this is for amateur unpaid work only, you can rework it and work something that works for you. Um, another thing is, are you having trouble keying into it? Like I said, there's an emotion, there's a character to it. Do you relate to that emotion? Do you relate to that character? If you don't, Find a way to. Look at Spider-Man. What is there to relate with with this guy? This guy who is a superhero and a wacky guy. You know, he he's always quipping and stuff. But when you get down to it, it's like he just he he loves his family, he loves his his aunt and his uncle, and it tore him apart that his uncle died because of him. He feels immense guilt. He has real everyday problems. He's just trying to keep his relationship going. He's trying to Get through the day, have a job, be Spider-Man. It's a lot of pressure, and we can all feel pressure, especially now. Like, times are rough right now with everything that's going on in the world, so you can find a way to relate. It doesn't have to be one-to-one. -one. Just find something similar, something parallel that you can relate to, and it'll be a lot easier to key into the character. It should not ever feel forced. It should always feel natural, like you could just read it and say it right there. It might take some work and some practice to get there, but that is the ideal. That's what you're working towards is being able to just see the thing and say, okay, that's how I'm going to read it. 
and it just comes out of your mouth. Not even the second part of this is how I'm going to j- just you see it. All right. It's coming out. I don't even know what it's going to sound like, but it's going to sound good. That's that's the plan. All right. Now we record. And when you record something like this, you're going to go and I'm going to actually shrink this down a little bit so I can read the script. I'm just going to record this little bit as an example. And this should all be set up. It's not going to sound great because this room is not especially well treated, but I'm going to give you an idea. So you hit record and you do not hit stop. Do not hit stop until you are done with the whole script. Every single one. Do not risk losing a take. All right. If you're ever recording for a client, ever recording for anybody, as soon as you get in, you hit record. You don't stop until you're done because if you lose a take it's your fault and you do not want to be the person who lost a take so you want to wait for about five seconds of silence just i'll get you doc ock as long as my suit is red and blue there's some blue i'll get you doc ock as long as my suit is red and blue. There's some blue. I'll get you, Doc Ock. As long as my suit is red and blue. There's some blue. Now, if we had more parts to do, I'm only doing the one. But if we had all six to eight parts set up, I would record through those as well. And I did three takes. I did an ABC take. That's where each take is still the same character but each one is a unique idea. They were not the exact same delivery, and that helps so that if it were in a larger production, they could pick the one that works better off of the other line. In modern voice acting, you're not always there in the room with the other person. It'd be a lot nicer if you could be, or at least on Skype to hear them, but often you're just recording on your own. And sometimes you're not even given the context. I've gotten so many scripts that are just the lines I'm reading, none of the other characters. It's unfortunate. Excuse me. A little bit of water. But the ABC take helps that. The ABC take lets you have a lot of variety. And if you can do more, D, E, F, go for it. If you have time, if you feel like it's worth your time, definitely do that. So once you have all of those recorded, you are going to go back to Audacity. You're going to pop that into full screen. Oh, that works too. Okay. Um, and then you are going to scroll. And you're going to cut out this first chunk. So before that, you can see the big gap. And, oh gosh, Audacity slows way down. Okay. Any second now. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Delete that. Don't need it. Just hit delete. It's literally as simple as drag and hit delete. Now, what we want to do is listen back. Let me make sure my computer audio is on so you guys can hear it. In fact, let's make this like that. And uh, got to adjust some things. Hopefully I did that correctly. I'll get you, Doc Ock, as long as my suit is red. Hold on. I I can't hear it. Uh, uh, is that correct? That should be correct. Hmm. Well, I'm not doing something right there, but as far as I can tell, it's going to the stream, so... I'll get you, what you're going to do is you're going to listen through suit is red. and you're going to find blue. the best take because I can't blue. hear it or wait. I'll get you, Actually, Doc I think Ock. the reason I can't hear it is because it's too quiet. Turn that up. Can I hear it now? I'll get you, Doc Ock, as long as my suit is red. I don't know. I don't use Audacity very often. I haven't in a long time. I just use Adobe Audition. And because of the stream, I'm trying to make it work. But, um... Yeah, so we're gonna just clip out one of the takes. We'll clip out the 
back and we'll clip out the end. And actually I'm gonna save one of these takes so that I have something to show you editing. I'm just going visually off of this. I can tell it's, I'll get you Doc Ock, as long as my suit is red and blue. There's some blue. You can just kind of see visually what the, the cadence was and I remember how I said it. So, I presume, I'm hoping I'm getting this right. This is a, a not so professional because it's not a professional demo. What did I say? What did I say? Not a professional demo. This is literally just to show people that you sound like something. All right. So grab it, Command X, Control X for cut, and then we're gonna go new, new, mm, mm, mm. tracks, add new, add new mono track, and then make sure you click the head to make sure that it's gonna do that. All right, and then you click the, that's the one right, time shift tool, is this correct? Yes, the time shift tool will scoot it along and then you can work out to line it up like that. And you just, okay, good, I'm glad you guys can hear it. Yeah, I can see the monitor here. Usually this is set up so I can hear the audio at the same time, but I guess Audacity is not set up for that, but whatever, it's just an example. So we would assume these are multiple takes, but you do that same thing with all of your best takes and you scoot them all separately down into their own tracks put whatever one is the best first you people are going to listen to probably one take one spot maybe a spot and a half and then click away if there's not something in there that immediately catches their interest so you got to make sure that the first first spot and the first couple spots are your absolute best and they are something that impresses not so that people will actually keep listening Again, not for pro work, but it's still a good thing to have in mind. So line them up, make sure the cadence is nice, make sure there's no big gaps. We are not putting music on this, because unless you are absolutely positive you know how to mix the music correctly, it's probably not gonna sound great. Not dig at you, you just gotta practice, you just gotta learn it, so don't bother mixing music in if you don't know what you're doing. It's a whole other skill on top of itself. So once you do that, you're going to go back to the I tool, and one by one, you're going to process these. We're going to do very light processing because once again, if you don't know what you're doing, you can make it sound really bad more often than you can make it sound good. So unless you're absolutely sure, don't add processing or at the very least add very little processing. Less is definitely, definitely more in processing. So what we're gonna do is light noise removal, which would be highlight a little section, go to effect, noise reduction, get noise profile, so it's listening to that. And then you click this, and then you Go back to noise reduction, and then noise reduction, 12 decibels, that sounds pretty high. Ooh, I've not used this in a while. We're gonna do like two decibels. Hopefully that sounds good. I have not used Audacity in so long, but just gentle, gentle noise removal. If you are doing it right, you shouldn't need to remove very much noise at all. Although equipment tends to make some amount of noise, so you'll usually have to do it a tiny, tiny bit, but keep it very light. Then you're going to do compression. I can definitely do this one visibly. So select the track, hit compressor. And so what this is gonna do is it has all of these things, but the things you need to recognize are the noise floor, which is your quietest parts. This is what it's gonna be. All right, so we're gonna say probably about negative 40 with this mic. Um, yeah, let's go negative 50. Let's be ambitious since this isn't for actually anything. The threshold is where it's going to start working. So look for the biggest peaks, the, the highest parts. In fact, it's easier to show on this one. This right here, that's the, the biggest peak right there. So you find that. You find about a midpoint between that 
and the average peak. Oh, oh, right, the compressor is going. Hold on, hold on. Switch over to that track. Compressor. So you want to find about a midpoint. It's a little difficult with this. So, gosh, how do you how do you use this this program versus uh ah stretch stretch there we go okay so you can play it back Blue. I'll get you Doc you can Hawk. also see my suit in red. here so that's about Blue. a little above negative three and the average is about that should have played as long as my suit is red average is about negative 15 so we want about halfway between there so that'd be da -da 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 -da. Uh, oh, why can't I math right now what's the, what's the one um three to 15 that's 12 negative nine negative nine would be our threshold so click this over Ooh, this way negative nine Ratio, three to one is good. Four, maybe, if you know what you're doing. Don't want to take it too high. Again, less is more. Attack and release time, you can leave those default. So when we hit this, it's going to squish the higher stuff down and raise the other stuff, so it's kind of smooshing it into a more even shape. You don't want to do it too much, because it can give kind of a weird effect to the sound. But if we did this correctly, no. No. No, we did not. Hold on. Ooh. I'm I'm very out of practice in this specific one. Or well, here, before we do that, control control Z, command Z to undo. Hmm. Is there a different compressor in here? Nope. Okay, okay. So Hmm. Negative 50. Let's see. This compressor works a bit differently. The thing is, most there's only a handful of ways that they can work. But basically, the threshold is where you want it to start working. Everything below that will be raised up. Everything above that will be pulled down. And you want the ratio to be how much it's pulled down. So... 3 to 1, that means for every 3 decibels above the threshold it gets, it's going to shrink it down by a third. So 3 down to 1 for each decibel. Not exactly 1 to 1 if there's fractions. They'll also, it's just making it a third as loud above the thing, basically. Compress based on peaks. Is that what I, what it should be doing? Hold on, let me see. If that is correct no why does it keep getting louder in that way hmm maybe I should have practiced with this I could do this an audition with no problem but I don't want to show that if that's not how it works here let's see negative 12 minus 4 da, da, da. Oh, the makeup gain. That's what was throwing me off. Yep, yep, yep. I always have that stuff turned off. That basically means that it will raise it back up after it does it to try and get it back to the level it was at. So if we do this... Kind of. I don't know why it didn't affect that peak. That's pretty much literally what it should be affecting more than anything. Hmm. Wait. Don't want to double compress. This part is going to get very edited down in the YouTube version. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Um, That is one thing I really like about Audition more than anything is that you can save your preset, which I do quite often. If I have a client, I will usually save a preset for them so that later I have a baseline for what to do. You still want to do it based on the specific character, the specific file, but it is nice to have that. 
and you can do that in other stuff. It's just called a macro. So the idea is that you hit, you start recording the macro, you do everything you want to, and then you stop. So when you do that macro again, it'll run through everything. It's just less intuitive because you can't change it. It's a recording. Um, Audition also has a similar thing. They're called favorites. They're just macros again. Uh, let's see. Should have just called this stream Pro Voice Actor Struggles with a Beginner's Program. This is not working well. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. So, yes, that is compressed now. Hopefully, well. Like I said, it for some reason will not play on my blue headphones. I'll look at you, Doc Ock. But that has brought it down to a more reasonable level. Now, light compression, use those rules. As I said, if you have anything, literally, there are going to be dozens, if not hundreds, of tutorials for how to do these things in any possible program. So, if you are confused at all, if you just look on YouTube, compression, whatever program, compression, audacity, tutorial, they'll explain it all. Um, also, quick bit of lingo, it's called a digital audio workstation. Whatever you're doing your audio in, recording and editing, it's called digital audio workstation, D-A-W, usually pronounced as DAW. Bit of lingo. Also, another bit of lingo. Uh, this is Entertainer Secret Throat Spray. Not a plug or anything, I just like it. It's basically just aerosolized glycerin. So it's just... Gets, gets a bunch of gunk between your vocal cords so that they're not rubbing and getting raw as often. There's also aloe in it, so if you have a sore throat, it can help that a little bit. Good to have a bit of that beforehand. You might not necessarily need it. Vocal health is a whole other topic, whole other stream, maybe in the future. So, a little bit of noise removal, a little bit of compression, then we hard limit. And when I say hard limit, that's just the name, because we are not going to go very hard with it again. Very light touch. This is just if there is anything slightly over. And in fact, I'm going to go back to our other one because it is not going to need as much compression and such. So we're going to hit that with the compressor, which does not need to be to negative 15. Actually, pro hold on. Let me look at the meter with this. I'll get you, Doc Ock, as long as my suit is red. Uh, yeah, Blue. negative 15 will probably be good on that one. So compressor. Negative 15, da, da, da. same stuff. Okay, so now it's fairly uniform. Now there's this tiny bit of peak over top. Now what we can do is hard limit very gently. Hard limit, hard limit, starts with an H. Is that not it? I guess maybe a limit. Can this not do that? <laughs> oh, come on, limiter, right? Yeah, okay, so limiter, set to hard limit. Uh, don't do anything to the gain knobs here. And then we will limit it to a specific volume. Now, it's less easy to see here. Can I actually change this? Nope, not that I can tell. There's probably something in the preferences for that. But let's listen one more time and just watch the meter. Get you, Doc yep. Doc. Nope. As long as my suit is red and blue. There's some blue. I'll get you. Watch that again because I messed up. I'll get you, Doc Ock. As long as my suit is red and blue. Okay. There's some blue. That's about I'll negative nine. So we're going to hard limit to about negative like mm, ten, we'll say. So we're just clipping off a tiny bit. There we go. Blends it out. It's a little flat. You usually want it to still be fairly rounded and dynamic. Can Audacity use plugins? By my understanding, yes. Um, I wouldn't know exactly how to import. Does that work? No, perhaps preferences. By my understanding, it can, but I don't think there'll be a ton of support for it. So if you're using plugins, you will probably want to upgrade to Reaper or Audition or Pro Tools if you want to go like real 
heavy duty with it. That's like the 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 big boy one. Um, yeah, I I don't know the ins and out of Audacity the way I used to. When I first started out, I used it a lot, but since I've been using Audition so long, I'm a little rusty. Not sure how it works now, but if you do look up tutorials on how to add plugins, you're definitely going to find some if it's something you can do. So now that we've hard limited that tiny bit, the last thing we want to do for a single file is normalize to negative three, and that will bring it all up. See, there's some background noise and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a breath right there. It's a little bit of spectral decay. Probably not the best file. Like I said, this is not my voiceover mic. This is not where I would be recording voiceover. Okay, yeah, Audition definitely does plugins. Um, although a lot of the stock Audition stuff is still pretty good. The one I would definitely recommend is RX-7 because it can do magical things in repairing audio, but it's also kind of pricey. Sometimes it goes on sale. So that might be one to look into if you know what it is. The best advice I can ever give is don't get something until you know what it does. If you don't know what it does and you don't understand why you'd need it, you don't need it because it's just superfluous stuff that you're not going to use. So until you are at a level where you understand what it is, until you've done the research and you actually understand why you would need it and you're sure that you do need it, don't worry about it. You can do stuff with the stock stuff to a pretty good level. So we got that normalized. So that's one track. And this is, again, pretty sloppy, but I'm going to get rid of that. So once you are done, in fact, actually, let me put that back in. Once you are done with all of your spots, you are going to eh, 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 export, export. Ah, yeah, there it is. Export as a WAV, usually pronounced wave. And you're going to um, export that to wherever your stuff goes. I'm just going to do it to the desktop and name it not for pro demo. So you do that. Tracks will be mixed down, which is what you want. Now, obviously, they'd look a lot better than this. This is just a basic example. So now you're going to close these. And you are going to go to File, Open. And not Movies. Why did it go there? And then we open up the same file. Ooh. Oh, wait. Woo. Uh, da, 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 da. We can read the files straight from source. So now everything is mixed together. And so once everything's mixed together, to make sure they meld correctly, you're going to want to, once again, do a little bit of compression. Very light. Got to click the thing first. Effect. Compressor, we're going to do probably like negative 12 to be safe. And just a gentle compress. In fact, I'm going to put that down to 2.5. Gentle, we're just melding it together, molding it very gently. Okay. And then, once again, very gently, hard limit at about a, I'm going to say, negative nine wait actually there's stuff in here that's up to three so let's do negative 3.5 be very gentle about it it's gonna clip off a little bit and then finally normalize to negative 0.5 so that will keep it from going all the way to the top. It's not clipping, but it will sound good and loud. So this is not going to be the best because it's just a stupid example for this tutorial. I'll get you, Doc Ock, as long as my suit is red. Hopefully that sounds blue. decent. I know it would in audition. 
I'll get you, Doc Ock. I haven't used an as as audacity in quite a while. And blue. There's some blue. So, once you have that, then get a SoundCloud account, put it up on SoundCloud as a wave, export it, the final one is a wave, put it out, make sure it's no longer than about 60 seconds, try and keep everything consistent, export it, upload it to SoundCloud. Now, if someone is looking for a voice actor for a non-professional role that you're not getting paid for, just some fun with friends or something, and you are a good fit, don't go out for stuff that you're not going to be able to do, link them to that so that they can hear what you sound like. If you don't have something at least that you can direct people to, you're not going to be able to get even practice roles. So I don't know why... I, I, I see sometimes people being like, hire me, or, you know, I could do this role, and they don't give any kind of link to what they sound like. It's like, I don't know, maybe you could. I need to know what you sound like first, though, so you gotta have something to direct them to at least, and then they can be like, okay, here's like the audition script, record that, and send it to me, you know, something like that. Okay. Now, we're gonna go back to big picture mode because the editing tutorial is done and it was probably pretty janky i apologize i'm gonna say you need to do your research and learn how to edit properly basic idea just start recording stuff and anytime you run into a problem just google it look it up on youtube because there is guaranteed to be someone who has done a tutorial on how to fix it so you have the greatest resource ever, the internet, so you're going to need to do research. Even when it's a business, so much acting is research. Even just finding a role, getting a, like getting into the role, pure research. So keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's something that you need to do. You need to research. So if, something is some, if there's something that you could Google, Google it. Because it's definitely been said somewhere probably many many times so let's see Whoop. if i do this correctly okay now you have some experience you practiced a bunch you have your crappy slap together not for professional work demo so that you've gotten some small roles you've been using your janky little space to do some short fun roles Maybe you've made some of your own projects, you know, narrations, dubs, whatever. Keep in mind, if you do dubs, get the author's permission first. You can DM them on Twitter, email, Facebook. It's not hard. Until you get an answer, and that answer is, yes, you may, don't do it. It's not cool. It's stealing work. Even if you're not saying that you wrote it, even if you credit them, if you have not asked them direct permission... It's not cool, guys. Just be cool. Ask politely. Come on. It's it's the bare minimum. Maybe you took some acting classes, or you did some live performing, or you got a coach. Great. All the better. The more work you want to put into this, the more you invest into it in, with your time, your energy, your money, you know, the better you'll be at it. Like, it's just you have to put something into it to get something out of it. And hey, maybe you didn't listen to me and you've got some paid gigs with your not-for-pro-work demo for unpaid work only. It's not impossible, but it is an amateur demo, and if you get a reputation as an amateur, it's hard to get rid of that reputation. So be careful. Don't use this for paid work. If you do, I am not responsible for what happens. I told you not to. But I can't stop you. Anyways, after a few months, once you've done some work, you're starting to feel comfortable, you know, getting confident, you've done some roles for other people, you've done your own stuff, make a new amateur unpaid, not for paid work demo out of your best roles. Make a compilation, edit it to about 60 to 75 seconds, keep all of the clips consistent, six to eight of them. If they were mixed well, the person did a good job, Use the thing from it. Just, like, pull the clip out, ask for their permission, 
best to ask for their permission when you do it. Like, hey, can I use this for a demo later? And preferably in an IM so that you have it in writing just in case. Most of them will be like, yeah, sure. Whatever. As long as it's out already, you know. Always ask because it's now also their work that they've put into it. If not, use your own drive file from the role. Again, probably ask for work if you didn't write it or anything. You know, ask to make sure that it's okay. But if it wasn't mixed well, just use the drive file. You don't have to have music and stuff. It is about your voice after all. And you're not getting pro work with this, so don't you don't have to worry about that. Then you can use that. Replace it. After about a year, or two, or after you've been doing voiceover regularly for six years, six months to a year, my apology, or if your coach says you're ready, if you've got a coach, they'll let you know. If they're a good coach, they will tell you, all right, time to get a demo. And in fact, if they're a really good coach, they'll help you. They'll get you recommendations, and they might even have it as part of their program to get you a demo. So that's when it's time to make a real demo. When you actually have good experience, you've been doing it for a while, you're maybe a little established in some fan communities, you got your confidence, it's time to move on. So the big question next, professionally made or self-produced? This is the huge one. This is the one that everybody asks. And there's no solid answer because it's entertainment. It's a wild world. So people can get hired just by hearing them in a vlog. People can get hired without being that good necessarily with just an email without sound. So maybe that works. If you're a good enough salesman, who knows? It's a weird, weird industry. So I'm not saying any specific thing here, but generally these are the things to keep in mind. It depends on your skill set. And we'll talk about pro first. A pro demo in a major market like LA or New York is going to cost one to four thousand dollars, usually, in a major market. If you go to a non-major market, there are people there they'll be willing to do it for less, but you will not get the same benefits because a pro demo in a major market is going to get you recording time usually, either at their facility where they've made a professional booth, or they'll book a space for you. If you're not in the area or they don't have one, they'll book a space for you so that you have a professional space to record your demo. That will be included in the cost, basically. Usually, there will be a professional director, which might be the person who's producing the demo as well, to direct your performance, which is great. It's always, always going to be a better performance if someone else is listening to let you know, hey, that sounded weird, let's do it this way. Or, hey, I'm not sure you pronounced that right. Like, someone else as a second opinion is always going to be better, whether they're skilled or not. But the more skilled they are, even better. And with this, you should be getting, for your money, a professional director. That should be included. You'll get expertise in audio production, as well as industry standard software and all that stuff. That will be included. If they don't have that expertise and they're not using the software, they should not be charging so much. That um, What I'm saying is, like, this is the value that you get. If you're getting this, this is what you can expect to have from it. Market research from them for relevant current custom scripts tailored to your skills. They'll talk to you. They'll make sure that your script is for you and it's going to show your strengths and not just be a general cookie cutter thing it's also going to be current and it's going to be relevant they will do research they'll see what current market trends are so that you have a demo that you can use today not in the past when things were more streamlined or easier less bloated uh, all in major mark like no relevant current custom tailored to your skills that's what they should be giving you for that price. <laughs> and possibly, although this is more of a coach thing, maybe some marketing advice. They might tell you like, hey, here's where you can send your demo. Here's like a good way to share it out. That's not a guarantee, but some of them do offer that. And most coaches, that's a big part of what they'll teach you. So if the coach is also your demo producer, that's what you get. Sure to cite about coaching programs. Just as VO has blossomed as a career, so have shysters looking to separate naive hopefuls from their money. 
so make sure that the coach is a seasoned voiceover professional currently working in the industry. If they haven't worked in years, how are they supposed to know how to get you work now? They can get you work in the past, but if they aren't working right now, then they don't know what how to coach you properly to get you work now. So make sure that they, they've been working four years. Like, not four years, but they have been going and working in the industry for a good amount of time. Okay? And that they've been successful at it. And that they are current. They understand the current trends. If they aren't seasoned, it's like, what what are they going to tell you that you don't already know? Like, you can just Google most things if it's someone who's only been in the industry for a little while. Um, but in general, Google is your friend. You can Google it and see if you Google their name, their credits will show up. Their IMDB, probably. Their their website so that you can see that yeah they're they're the real deal if a coaching program has a set time frame and does not offer post program support and promises a demo at the end it's probably a demo meal demo mill i swear i talk for a living <laughs> uh. yes thank you thank you for agreeing do your research. Like I said before, research research and marketing are way bigger a part of voice acting or acting in general. <sighs> I know, I know. I I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, and I've also already been talking for like almost an hour and a half. So I'm a little bush mouthed. But um I, I apologize, that was probably disgusting sounding. But yeah, do your research. It's it's a huge part and it will only help you. The more you research, the better you'll get, both in your performance and in your production and in just voice acting. It's, it's research. Acting is research and business, and it's all overlapping and intersecting and all that. But yes, if the program has a set, strict time frame, like going for 12 weeks, and then they're done, they're not going to give you support after, and they promise a demo at the end... Or a low price as well. If it's like within the like thousand dollar range, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get you through, and we're gonna get you a demo." It's like, how much of that cost is going to the demo to make sure it's good? Like, where where are they cutting costs here? It's a demo mill. It's just a company that figured out enough to sound legit. They'll just churn you through some generic course, toss you through a rush demo process, and drop you on the curb with no guidance. Don't waste your time or your money. Like even. These, it can be like a thousand dollars that you could have just spent on a demo or a better coach. Although most coaches are gonna be like for a program are gonna be like in the two grand plus range. Like they're not cheap. They are worth it in the end. Like they're very helpful, and it's a business thing, so you can write it off on your taxes. It's a business expense. I digress. Ah, I am not an accountant. Please ask your accountant or your tax preparer to make sure that tax info is accurate. But it is a business expense, to my knowledge. Now, a real coach is going to work with you one-on-one -on -one to improve your skills in acting, recording, and business. They're going to make sure you know how to record yourself well. Because I can, like, talk at you, but they'll actually, like, step-by-step -step walk you through it. They'll teach you how to act. They'll direct you through sessions. They'll give you practice scripts. They'll give you all sorts of tips and let you know, like, hey, this is this is how it's worked for me. This is what we're going to try with you. And they'll teach you some business stuff. They'll let you know how to market yourself. They'll tell you what you need to market yourself. All the th three pillars to be able to be maybe not a smash success, but at least to keep your head above water in what is a very saturated industry. They will help you with the demo when you're ready. No matter how long it might take, they might go a little longer to make sure that you're ready and they will check in, you know, and you can check in with them. At the very least, even if they don't make the demo themselves, they should be able to recommend a reliable producer, probably their own because they are a working voice actor. So they also need a demo from time to time. Usually like every one, two, maybe three years. If you really don't improve, I do it about every year. Um, 
but you should update your demos because your skills are improving and you want to be able to show that. Uh, obviously, like they'll continue to support you after coaching ends if they're a good coach. Don't bug them 24-7. They are working and they're probably coaching other people too. But, you know, if you are having like an issue that you don't really understand that's industry related, you can probably shoot off an email with the question and be like, what should I do with this? And they should not have a problem with like wanting to answer that. Yes, thank you. At least in the UK, recording a demo reel is claimable against your taxes, but it changes from state to state, country to country. Talk to a talk to a lawyer or an accountant or a tax preparer if you're really nervous. But generally, anything you buy for your business, like a demo service, a coaching program, equipment that is used exclusively for your service. This is used for personal stuff as well, so you know, I, I I marked it off when I was only using it for voiceover in the booth. So it's it's clear for then. It was for that year at the very least. I don't know. Taxes are weird. Don't ask me about taxes. Find somebody to help you out with it. And hey, their fee can also probably be on done on the taxes. But again, ask them. I'm not I'm not a lawyer, not a tax preparer. I'm not giving you legal advice, I'm not giving you financial advice, I'm giving you voiceover advice. That is all. Uh, da, 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 da. If you want to get a coach, do some research. That's like I've been saying over and over again. That's acting in general. Like you got to research a role. You got to research the people you're working with to make sure they're on the up and up. You got to make sure that when you're about to pay somebody thousands of dollars that they know what they're doing and that you're going to get your money's worth. I mean, because if they're not worth their money, the only lesson you're going to learn is do your research next time, which is... Probably a good lesson to learn before you spend thousands of dollars. And hey, if you want to be sure with a coach, obviously Google and stuff, but like check forums, subreddits. Some of you might have come from, um, are you goofing in this chat? Are you goofing? Um, so check forums, check subreddits. Some of you have come from the r slash voice acting subreddit. If somebody's scamming people, it's going to come out in that Reddit. Like, people just make posts like, hey, I got scammed. Like, don't let it happen to you. Or they'll, like, ask, like, hey, who's this guy? Um, that's your last one. You do it one more time, you're getting blocked, bud. No spam, please. Um, let's see. Yeah. Just make sure they've been working currently. Check for them, subreddits, community areas. And, hey, a good rule of thumb, if there's a specific voice actor you like, like Rob Paulson, who does a ton of voices, Richard Horvitz, you know, and he's in Vader Zim, go to their website. A lot of them do offer coaching. What the price is, eh, I don't know. I, I have, I've been thinking about getting uh, coaching from them, but I want to make sure that I'm in a good enough financial situation that if they're like, it's this much, I can be like, okay, let's do it. I don't want to bug them. That's my personal thing. I I'm getting coaching and stuff. I so whatever. I just haven't from a specific voice actor, but I do hope to do the Richard Horvitz program someday. He seems like a great guy, and I really like his his philosophy on stuff. You can look up on YouTube his philosophy on voiceover. It's great. I all these guys. It's good stuff. Okay, okay, hold on. Let's, uh... Da, 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 da. Sorry, guys, one second. Oh, come on now. There's got to be a way to do this. And blocked. Okay. I gave you warning, dude. You are blocked. Okay. Do it. Do it. Oh, crap. How do I get back to the screen? Uh... 
Okay. Chat's back open. Sorry about that, guys. That'll be edited out on the YouTube version. Ah, but yeah, if you go to most actors' websites, they might offer coaching. They'll usually have a separate tab. Email them and ask them about their process and what they can do. I blocked you. What's up here? Ooh, right, because that's my personal thing. Wow, okay. That's really useful, guys. Okay. Come on now. Ban. There we go. Ban was the correct thing. Freaking jerk. Okay. Sorry about that. There are less than savory people on Twitch, I guess. I'm still kind of new to the platform. I mean, it's the internet. Stuff happens. Okay. So, yes. If you like a voice actor, check their website. They might offer coaching. Email them. Ask them about their process and what they can do. And do this for any coach. Like, if a coach wants to do the best for you, which they should, they should have no problem answering some questions through an email. Like, email them, ask, tell them your situation, tell them what you hope to achieve with them, and they should at least have time to let you know about it. Be critical about their response. Think, like, does it sound like they personally wrote it, or does it sound like an assistant wrote it who isn't actually going to know? Does it sound like they want to you to hire them or like they want to help you because if they just want you to hire them that's not really putting your you know your needs first which is kind of the point of coaching like if they're not helping you out why are you paying them do you feel pressured at all like if the, if you feel like you're getting pressured if there's a hard sell or anything back out there's no problem you don't have to go to that coach there's so many coaches out there there's re reputable ones if you feel pressured, even if they were legit, it's their fault for pressuring you. They lost the sale. That's salesmen in general. If somebody's trying to sell something to you too hard, get out of there. Nobody cares. I mean, they might care, but it's not your problem. Um, Read their testimonials. They should have testimonials on their site. And if you want to be really sure, contact the people that wrote those testimonials and ask them to describe their experience politely. Just be like, Hi, I saw that you took coaching with them. Could you please let me know what your experience was like? I'm looking to gain coaching from them as well. And you might not always get a response. They don't have to respond to you. But if you're polite, people will usually be like, yeah, it was great. Or uh, not so good. Or no, stay away. I didn't even tell them to put that testimonial. Thanks for letting me know. If you're ready to do the research, know exactly what you're doing, and are 100% certain that you can produce to industry standards, there's not really a reason not to make your own. That's very controversial. I know. I know. I know. I know. A lot of people are going to disagree with that. But if you are doing market research, effective market research, know exactly, exactly what you're doing and are 100% certain that you can reproduce to industry standards. Like, no question, you are going to be sure that your... Sorry, I was just double-checking because it looked like it hadn't removed that guy's messages. If you are 100% sure, like, you could produce something that could be put on TV, in a movie, on the radio, and it be accepted... Technically, you can make your own demo. I, It's still iffy, because there's always that little bit of, like, maybe you're thinking too highly of yourself. It's, it's tricky, guys. So, generally, I'd say err on getting a pro demo made. Like, if you are not absolutely, positively certain, have not been working in audio for years, getting the industry standard approved by broadcast national stuff, air on the demo being professionally produced by someone who definitely has but if you have that stuff you can technically make your own there are drawbacks you don't have a director you know that's you're just by yourself self-directing not necessarily always going to be worse but always going to be different 
So you need to have a lot of experience directing yourself if you're going to try and do this. You're recording yourself. You could you could rent a studio space, like a professional studio space, but it's it's pricey, and you got to go by the like, it's expensive, to the point where some spaces you may as well just get a professionally produced demo because it's going to cost about the same amount. You're not getting feedback, and not just like the director feedback, but like when it's done, they're not listening to it and being like, maybe we need to go back and like. It's risky, guys, because it's it's isolated. And you could put all this work into making it and then find out it wasn't good enough. And you should definitely make sure it's good enough before you start sending it to anybody because you don't want to get a bad reputation. But real talk. A lot of pro demos produced by professional demo producers don't sound like they're worth $1,000 or more. And... As long as you don't have any glaring mistakes, a lot of clients won't hear the difference. T take this with a grain of salt, because again, it is still, it's still risky. Because if you get the client that can hear the difference, you're not going to be working with that client. So keep that in mind. But listen to other people's demos. Some super successful voiceover artists working in Hollywood have kind of low quality demos. They don't sound amazing. And some less successful voiceover actors have great demos. They're making no money, but their demos sound amazing. And they should be making tons of money, but nah, it's it's more than the demo. It's marketing in the end. It's business. If they hear your voice and they believe it's in a pro production or is to that standard, you can get hired. That being said... That's a fair point. Um, I'd also recommend separating out different clips or voices. Don't do it all in one go. Focus in on each clip. Build it slowly. Sure. The tutorial I did earlier, which was kind of sloppy. I apologize. It... It was for unpaid amateur work, but that's a good tip. Doing each thing separately can be good. Now, when I said t do it in one go, just record the thing in one go. You can leave 20, 30 minutes of silence as you go away, look at the other piece, reset yourself, get into the other character. Like, cutting out 30 minutes of silence, like, it's pretty clear that there was nothing happening in there, so it's just, uh, delete. And you don't worry about missing something if there was something in there. So, recording the whole thing, it's easier to cut out silence than have to go back and record and re-get into character when you're already cooled back down. So, keep that in mind. But that is a good advice. Yeah, doing it, doing it separately, getting into character, it's just all part of acting. Another thing you should be teaching yourself to do, because it's voice and it's acting, and it's recording and it's business, it's a lot of things... They all overlap, all interlock. That being said, with everything, with it being marketing, you know, it's, you don't have to have an amazing sounding demo to get work necessarily. If you can sell it, if you aren't 100% certain you know the standards and know how to meet them, don't do it. Don't, like, don't risk it if you want to get pro work. Because your demo is you, as far as your clients are concerned. Like, they know your demo. They hear it. They know that is the quality I should expect. So if it's not high enough quality, they're not going to trust that you can get them the quality that they want. So you need to make sure that it is representing you appropriately, and you're not selling yourself short by having a not so good demo. If your demo sounds amateur, that's the reputation you'll get as an amateur and amateurs don't get paid. They're amateurs, they're not professionals. So if your demo doesn't sound professional, they won't think you're a professional. If we're pulling back the curtain for a minute, like I said, most of voiceover as a job is mm -hmm. 
That's true. A lot of companies, before I get into the, this last bit, many companies hire from auditions rather than voice reels. But yes, that's the thing, is they'll usually listen to your voice reel before they even give you the chance to audition, depending on how you reached out to them. But it's generally the first thing a client will hear. If they find your website, your demo is the first thing they hear. So if that's not to a quality they want, they're not even going to give you the chance to audition. So it gets your foot in the door, is what the demo is for. It like gets you there, and then the audition is what sells them on, okay, you can do our specific thing. So keep that in mind. It's, it's very important. And also, one thing I forgot to mention, sometimes you'll hear, sometimes you'll hear demos called demo reels or voice reels. Um, it's all the same thing. It's just, uh, it used to be on reel-to-reel -reel tape, and then it went to cassette. Now it's on flash drive CDs. Usually it's going to be an email. So demo is just the most common way to say it, but there's a few different names. It's just industry terms. But yeah, most of voiceover as a job is research and marketing. The vast majority of time is spent finding work. 90 to like 99% of the time, you're just hustling to get the work. That little bit where you get paid, where you actually get to perform, is the best part. And it's so, so worth it. It's exhilarating. It's so fun. It's so rewarding to, after all that work, finally do what you've been wanting to do. You know, but it, it is a ton of work. And it's a ton of work not doing what you want to do. So keep that in mind if you want to get into this. You're not going to spend the whole time just walking in the booth and recording. Those days are over. You're going to be doing a lot of networking. You're going to be doing a lot of stuff. But if you have the drive, if you meet the standards of audio and performance quality, you act well, and you have good audio, you can market yourself well, and you're fun to be around, like... They'll always pick someone who they enjoy working with over someone who's just kind of okay. Yep, like you said right there, best job in the world. And you can make a living recording yourself. If you have the drive, if you have high quality audio, if you are always striving to improve yourself as a performer, if, if you're always marketing yourself to your best ability, you can make a living. Maybe not the best living. Then there will be peaks and valleys sometimes, you know, some, sometimes you'll go a year and make almost nothing. Like even some of the most successful people have had years where they made well below the poverty line, but they were doing it, doing something they love. And I think that's worth something. So keep in mind also, you might not do the work you want to. Character work is the funnest. Th that's what everybody wants to do because it's the fun work. But there's just less of it. It's, there's not enough to go around to everybody. And even if there was enough for everybody, there's still just not enough to do it full time. Commercial narration is where you can make ends meet. You get the commercial narration jobs, the dull medical narration jobs. You can make a living with those. It's not as fun as character work, but it's still more fun than like a day job, so... It's, it's better than nothing. It's it's worth it in the end. And it's it's incredibly rewarding to be your own boss and work on your own terms for the most part. But in the end, it's just work, folks. It's not glamorous or fun. If you put in the hours doing efficient, effective work, you can make it a career eventually. It might take years of time, energy, and monetary investment, but you can do it. There's also industry stuff. Listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to do a lot of character work, you have to get into the union and you got to be in a place where it's being made. Like Vancouver, BC, LA, New York. Um, uh, Austin? That's where Funimation is, I think. There's some character work there. That's true. Commercial work still gets you experience. Like, it makes ends meet. And you're still improving yourself, which 
if you have the true drive to do this, you should just be happy to do it. But you should still get paid because it's still work. And they should still value that and you should still value that. Just because you're having fun doesn't mean you aren't putting in your time and energy and deserve something for it. So it's nebulous, but I hope I've demystified some stuff. I hope that people have found this helpful. I know people have come in and out and such, but I'm glad that people came in and yeah, hopefully it helped you and hopefully you end up having a good good career or at least a good time doing it. You know, Maybe you don't want to make it a career. Maybe you just want to do it for fun. And hey, if you want to do it for fun, Make your own stuff, you know? Like, I do stuff on YouTube and on Twitch and stuff just for fun and practice. And, you know, maybe somebody will see and want to hire me to do voices. But even if they don't, I'm just enjoying myself and getting to practice my craft. So you can use it for something. Just keep keep on keeping on, guys. It's art. It's business. It's art business. It's weird and nebulous and contradictory, but... It's fun in the end. And yeah, I think that's where I'm going to stop it. Otherwise, I'm going to go on another half hour just ending after ending. Um, I, I'm not very good at conclusions, but this that's pretty much the end. I've uh, roughed up my voice a little bit, but I'm still doing okay. You know, it's only been about an hour 50. I've done worse. I've done worse while yelling. Yelling stuff will really rough you up. So I guess we'll finish this off. Um, I, I see the two of you in chat there, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Like, I've, I've been doing this about eight years. I've produced a few demos, mine and other voice talents, so I, I can, I can answer, I will answer what I can, and what I can't, I will at least try and direct you to a place where they can. All right, thanks, thanks, June. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Uh, editing this down is gonna be fun. My favorite roles. I haven't done anything huge because I'm not a union actor. Um, my favorite role, honestly, was this character I played for a little while called Dynamita in a kids show from South America. He he was like a little lucha wrestler character, and it was just kids show stuff. But I, I um. <clears throat> Should I do it? My voice is a little rough right now, so I don't even know if I can I can hit it. Let me let me get a little swig of water real quick. Oh. And I poured water all over my shirt. Ah, hold on. But um it's been so long. He I the series either ended or they recast or something, but I haven't gone to work doing him in a while, but it was a it, it was it was like this dynamita. Um, it was just kids show stuff. Sharing is caring and all that. <laughs> I do a lot of kids roles because my voice is higher than average. So I'm able, I'm able to get up into the kid range pretty easily. And I can actually sound like a child, which I usually don't do on camera. So I'm sorry if that's creepy. <laughs> I'm usually just in the booth and people don't care. Um, the weirdest moment was when I had like a full like handlebar mustache late last year and I was doing like kid voices so if anybody saw me it would be the most surreal kind of creepy image I'm sure but uh yeah he was one of my favorites um there's just been a lot of real of little bit parts here and there not as much character work as I like but sometimes commercial stuff has character work in it and I I've enjoyed that um I've done some English instruction so there was this one long thing about like a, a Thanksgiving holiday and like an exchange student. And I, I enjoyed doing that a great deal, but it was a lot of English instruction is a lot of high energy and also speaking a lot slower and more enunciated so they can hear it. Oh, and that was not great. Cause I was right off the cuff, but uh, yeah, it's fun but it's very weirdly filtered. If you want to hear a, a weird talent I have that's completely useless, 
I can talk like I'm slowed down in the program in post. It's so useful. If I wanted to sound like that, I could just actually slow it down in the program. But it's fun to just kind of like confuse people. Go like 90%. And they're like, what's what's going on? Oh, m much casting via sites. Um, it goes back and forth. Some sites are um, some sites are better than others. You know, so a lot of them are really saturated. Is the problem? Although I would say if you are up to standard, that's not as big a problem because the amount of people who are not up to standard and don't realize it, and thus are not actually competition, is surprisingly high. Um. In my experience, Casting Call Club, I pretty much only do the paid stuff, but I'm going to tell you, anything I've ever gone on Casting Call Club has never been completed. That's my experience, but I've gone dozens of projects, and not a single one has been finished. So, it was fun doing it, but it's never going to be seen by anybody, so what, what, what is it really worth in the end as far as casting goes? Um, I've done Voice Bunny which is kind of different. I get I get a good response on that. Um I but the thing is it's the thing I don't like about voice money is you can't talk to the client at all. You can't communicate and it's totally up to them whether they give you anything at all. Like I it's been months since I've gotten anything from voice money, so that's kind of dead to me right now, but then sometimes there'll be a couple months where I'm just getting a bunch of stuff. So who knows with that one. I haven't tried voice 1 2 3 I've heard bad things about it from a lot of people, and especially with the tier system, that's like really controversial right now. Uh, I I haven't bothered. I did do voices for a year because I got a discount at two seventy five. It was like two. It was like three ninety nine at the time for a year, and they gave me a discount for a promotion that was um two seventy five for a year, and I made my money back. I made my I made pretty much all of my money back, but it all ended up being like I got like five clients total and most of the money ended up coming from one guy rehiring me over and over. So it wasn't terrible, but it's also super saturated. And yeah, I, 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 I didn't sign back up cause now it's like 500 bucks a year. And it's like, even though I made it back within a year, there were like two, three months in that year where I just got nothing. It's like, is it worth 500 bucks to me for something that can't get me any income for a whole month? Not really. Not not at my, my current income level. If I get a higher income, it's a good investment. And it is a, probably a business expense again. But yeah, I don't know about that one. It's, uh, it's tricky. Hmm. It's, I'm not saying that they're like, I'm not saying that they're unviable, but they are very competitive, but so is everything in voiceover. So take it with a grain of salt, be ready to really fight for your roles and, uh, be, be c comfortable with the fact that you might not make your money back. That's just, that's just how work goes, honestly. Hmm. All right. Any other questions? Uh, I need to need to cool down my voice and then probably rest it for the rest of the night. I don't want to. I don't want to hear my voice up too much. I shouldn't be whispering. Whispering actually hurts your voice more. <laughs> Good thing to have is uh black tea. Black tea with honey. Honey is very soothing to the voice, and Black tea is great for inflammation. It brings any kind of swelling down, and you could literally rub black tea on like a sunburn, and it'll it'll like relieve it. So that's that's a great thing to have as a cool down drink. It can dry your voice out, so don't do it as a warm up drink. Just have like hot water and honey and like a little lemon to uh stop some mouth noise. That's what works for me, anyways. You gotta experiment with your own voice. There's no one and done solution for anything 
Okay, I'm just rambling at this point. I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream here, and it's gonna be video on demand for the most part. Um, and I'm gonna edit it down and put it up on YouTube. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will try and do another one sometime in the future. Hmm, what topic? I don't know. Maybe some more basic voiceover stuff. Maybe more specific stuff. We'll see. We will see. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.